what we would call a threshold or his ability to somewhat manage the pull away, there we go, the feelings that he has going on inside of him. If he goes too far above that threshold, he's never going to be able to find his way back down again. So it's up to me, right? I want to be able to send him up, but just enough up where he still has the confidence to come back down. So we're going to come right up here. And notice, too, if he wants to wiggle around a little here. Good. There we go. I'm not going to be very picky as long as what he's doing is safe. Like, if he starts to plow forward, I won't let that happen. But he can put his body wherever he feels he needs to in order to achieve that relaxation. Good. So as we work here, once again, I'm not just going to rush in time and time again and say, okay, relax, okay, relax. I want to visualize this as if I was talking to another person. And if we're talking about something uncomfortable, I might take a pause like this, right? By not asking him to do anything here. See how he needed about 30 seconds before that release were to come out. Mateo is naturally a pretty laid back guy. So I will say there are horses that as I work on this with them, it can take a solid five minutes, sometimes 10 as we start out for them to start to show the signs that Mateo is showing us here. Good. Good boy. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to ask again, right here. Good that we have a little distraction. Good. You see that little tuck in with his chin? Good. And once again, like here, as he starts to put his head down, I'm wanting to feel where he is mentally. If his head is down, but he's like here, he's pushing, that's better. Good. If he's pushing, he's not relaxed. Notice the release. Good. If he really starts to soften, like in that moment, he came in and it felt like a feather in my hand instead of 10 pounds of bricks, right? So if he starts to soften and hold that softness, that whole body and mind relaxation, that's when that pressure is going to come off. So here, I'm going to come back in. Good. Good. Ooh, that's nice. So notice there how I only needed maybe a half a pound of pressure. The beautiful thing about this is it feels so good to them, right? It might be hard work mentally, but once they reach that state, nobody wants to be anxious all the time. Nobody wants to have those, high, have those emotions. So this essentially is showing them or empowering them to have a way out of that. And so icing on the cake, remember that idea of relationships, right? The way in which we connect with everything around us. If we start to become the, the source of that ability for them, if every time we're with our horses, they can get rid of some of this tension and they become more relaxed, more confident, and they feel safer, we're gonna start to develop this relationship that our horses see us as a really capable partner. That idea of awareness, that idea of attunement, <laughs> boy, uh, is something that our horses rely on in a herd setting. Right? The, the more aware each horse is in a herd, the safer those horses are going to stay. So horses value attunement and awareness above all else. So as we work on these exercises, not only are we showing our awareness to them, but they're really going to start to appreciate the fact that we are bringing that good, bringing that to the table. So like here, he's pushing, he's pushing. And you can even see by his ears, right? He's not with me. He's kind of out of his body right now. Good. And so here, subtle, but you can see his foot, see him start to pick up his foot. These are those signs of tension. And so all I'm going to do, I'm just going to hold here. He's going to say, this is a little uncomfortable. Who wants to talk about their feelings? Not you. Good boy. So I'm just going to hold here. And so big difference between seeing signs of tension and seeing signs of tension followed by a release. So here, once again, I'm just holding. I don't mind this as long as it's nothing through. That idea of the fact that I can still have boundaries in these interactions, see that really tight lip. I'm just gonna wait for him here. I'm just gonna wait. I'm just gonna wait. We're still pushing. Good. Good, a little lick and chew, but he didn't soften in his pull, so I gave a mini release there. And now I'm gonna ask one more time, there it is, for him to come in. So that was quite a bit there, 
right? This is kind of like digging, or sometimes I'll compare it to a game of dominoes. The more we do it, the more we start to kind of loosen them up and get stuff out. Um, so it's not uncommon to see those reactions maybe get a little bit bigger before they start to get smaller, but the, the releases get bigger too, right? The more tension they're willing to kind of put on the table and get rid of, the bigger those releases are going to be when they actually come. So like here, I'm just going to give him a pause. Just going to make sure we're not going to wander off. No loose stallions today. Thank you. Good. So one thing I will say, good boy, is notice how when we pause, I don't go up to him and rub him and tell him what a good boy he is. I don't want to distract him from whatever it is that he was thinking about when he started to choose that relaxation. Right, like there, <laughs> good boy, as he started to wander off, that to me is a distraction, so I did ask him to come back and join us here. But the more I can kind of leave him to his own devices and let him find that relaxation on his own, the more for him this is gonna stick. So we're just sniffing as he loves to do. So like here, good example, right? Relationship boundary. I'm fine if he wants to scratch, but he's not allowed to rub on me, right? So there, if he asks to rub, I'm gonna say, no, you can't do that. <laughs> Take a few steps, right? Make sure he's not gonna go right back in and dive in to rub on me again. And if he doesn't, I will acknowledge the fact that he does have a little bit of a push. Good, and help him out here for a sec. Good. So here, I'm gonna come back in. Once again, right there, we got that boundary. Good. And so I'm just going to hold. Good. Very nice. Very nice. Right there. So that is about as good as I could ask from him in a first session. Did you guys see the tiny little nods there? When my horse finds that space, I don't want them to become unadjustable. Right? Adjustability is one of the biggest things I emphasize with my horses so that they never go into what we could say autopilot. Right? If they're really aware of what I'm asking, they will let me adjust them. So there is, as he was nodding, those were tiny pressure changes from my fingers, starting to ask him to move his head just a little bit to see if he would stay light and not dive. And he did a fantastic job. You could see that big release after. Head is down right now. I'm not going to interrupt him, even though we are kind of sniffing around. Good boy. And so here, a little, little social engagement, right? I'm just going to ask him to come back over here. Very good. Good. Very nice. So a lot of you might be wondering where this might come in handy, right? Where are we going to use it other than just standing still? in the middle of the arena, my expectation of my horse is good. Once they know this exercise, is that whenever they're in a halter, or really even without a halter, because you might have noticed I work a lot of horses, without a halter on, wherever they are, whatever we're doing, I expect them to be this soft, good. So this isn't what I would call an intermittent boundary, right? If a boundary is intermittent, it does not exist. So if I have a boundary with my horses, it has to be 100% of the time or not at all. If I want my horses to be soft, I need to expect that softness of them 100% of the time. Otherwise, it's not fair to expect them to give that to me when I want it because how are they gonna know when I want it, right? If I don't want it from them consistently. So if I am leading, say we go into like here, perfect example, right? If he were really educated in this and he walked into the ring and his head came up, first thing I'm gonna do is say, no, nope, don't think about out there. Bring your body and your mind to the same place. Give me the softness and come back to earth here with me. So we can use it to redirect their thought, right? I will start to transition this into the saddle as well. So everything we're doing here with the halter, uh, you can do it with the halter, with the bit. It's that whole idea of when you feel this physical sensation, your body and your mind have to relax at the same time too. So compared to riding, right, we can compare this idea of softening in the halter versus just finding that frame and not releasing to a really correct 
frame under saddle that lets our horses relax, kind of swing through their back, stay ground, exercise all the muscles they're supposed to exercise versus that really stiff visual frame that we see without the internal benefits that we get when we achieve that relaxation. Right, so I'll use this, like I said, every day, anywhere, this is the expectation that I'll have from them. Uh, and if they're ever stressed out, I will use it to ask them to find this mentality. So we can see a big change in Mateo from when he first came in here, right? For him to just be able to stand uh, without me needing to hold him. Totally relaxed, aware of what's going on, right? I wouldn't want him here zoned out, dissociated from everything happening. I want him completely aware, but comfortable. And so what I'm gonna do here before we move on, are there any questions so far? Here's a question. <laughs> 